Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to another episode of the Real Estate Informant Podcast. I am Lance Smith, your host, the Real Estate Informant. I am with my guy, David. We're doing it with David today. All right. And we have a special guest in the building with us today. Friend of mine, business extraordinaire, super entrepreneur, author of Downsizing Before Transition, as well as David. Look, mom, I finally cleaned my room. My man, <laughs> Jeff Turner. Hey, 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 Lance. Thanks for having me. What's up, Jeff? Ain't nothing much. Just here. Just here? Happy to be here? <laughs> Happy to be here, man. This is the first time you made it to the podcast. It took a while, but Absolutely. we're thankful that you're here. Mm-hmm. Right? David, mm-hmm. um, I see you thumbing through the book right now. Yes. What do you, what, do you, what piques your interest? You know, I, before COVID, I actually, um, my mom... My dad is a hoarder. He likes to hoard furniture. Mm. When he drives around, finds furniture in houses, she begged me to come down and help her clean out the garage. And after me and my brother came down to Florida and helped her clean out the garage, my mom was like, I'd never seen her so happy. Wow. That garage was packed. You couldn't even walk in there. And like her face lit up like a Christmas tree. Mm. And this book just makes me think of that. Right. Yeah. So it was like a hoarder moment? <laughs> hey, a little bit. But it How, was, Did she move after you unpacked the garage? Or did she stay there? And then does, does it look the same again? How long ago was that? Well, this was back in March. When's the last time you've seen it? I haven't been back since March. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like an update on that garage. I, okay, I've got to take, got to <laughs> take pictures. Because my dad just came back, so he's probably hoarding again. So uh-huh. my dad was out of the country for eight months. Uh-huh. And that's why she called me to come down so I could help my brother clean out the whole garage. Okay. And uh, I, I don't know if it's still in the same. So my guy, Jeff Turner, you've cleaned plenty of garages. You've taken homes that have been filled with, filled with clutter and yeah. debris and uh, old belongings that people no longer want, as well as things that they cherish, mm. right, because you help them make that transition. Tell us about, you know what, let me not talk about what you do. Tell us about what you do, Jeff, as an entrepreneur. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an uh, entrepreneur forever. My father, growing up, my father trained us to become entrepreneurs. We did everything from cut grass, clean out buildings, pull weeds, shovel snow, all types of stuff. And my father trained my brothers and I to to, uh, to work, hustle, uh, make money, be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And um, ever since then, you know, I. I like over every every type of job I've gotten, I've mm-hmm. always tried to get out of that job so I can do my own thing. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a it's a passion. It's a passion of mine. You know? What 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 about it? Um, first of all, I'm I'm not going to ask you how you got into it. Mm. Yes, I am. How'd you get into it? Into what, entrepreneurship or well, entrepreneurship we got. But how'd you like, get into what, the actual the the clean out portion of? Well, I'm in a junk removal business. My company is called Local Local Cleanups, and I'm in the process of transitioning to subtract it, recycle, repurpose, and reuse. And actually, I was in another business. I was in a shrub pruning business. Shrub pruning. Shrub and hedge pruning. I was in I was in a landscaping. That's business. landscaping, bro. Yeah, I was in a landscaping business with my brother Joe for nine years, mm-hmm. and I used to I read and do a study a lot of marketing books, and I read a book by Al Reese and Jack Trout called Focus: The Future of Your Company Depends on It. And in that book, he said if they're in an industry that's um, that's growing and it's a lot of people are coming into it, you need to narrow your focus, not expand it. So I would look around and I would always see people's shrubs and hedges overgrown, and I'm like, man, what? So I said to myself, man, if I could specialize and focus on shrubs and hedges, then I can differentiate myself from everybody else. So I started a company called Shrub Surgeon, and I started cutting shrubs. And after um, four years and $400,000 in business, I was like, wow. But then um, one of my customers was moving, and he needed to get rid of all his stuff. And I had just bought a 1969 old beat-up um, C-10 dump truck, and he asked me, did I know anybody that can get help him get rid of this stuff? And I said, I can. And I, didn't, I gave him a price over the phone per truckload, and I sent my guys over, and I said, man, this is a thing. How and many said, truckloads? Oh, man, we, we probably had about 10 truckloads. How big was this house? Big <laughs> house? Was yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a double 10 range. truckloads? Yeah, we had a lot of truckloads. Wow. But it was a small truck. It was a small... Um, oh, okay. It was a small dump Still truck. Still a lot, Got really. It. Well, I've, well, personally... 
Like mm -hmm. even as far as me and Jeff and I are concerned, like you've, he's cleaned out. He's done clean outs for tons of houses within for me, as far <laughs> as um, you know, ten years ago, like going back ten mm -hmm. years of doing this. So um, I know that he knows what he's talking about as far as the entrepreneurship part. Um, we've seen each other grow over the last decade or so, and it's something that um, he's very aspiring to see. Like he's written book, like he's he's an author now. Like this is my guy right here, author. And he's the guy. Honestly, believe it or not. 10 years ago he was telling me 10 years ago was it 10 years bro it was 10 like it was like 2000 yeah 10 we met what did i tell you 10 years ago you were telling me back then you were on the social media thing yeah yeah i mean i was back then and i was like get out of here i wasn't as i wasn't into it as big as much as i am now but mm -hmm. i was into it i would seem like i was always in front of the technology mm -hmm. when it came to business i didn't really um master it but i was always into it mm -hmm. And so I didn't, I never really had a team around me to actually help master it, mm -hmm. but I would always learn about it. One thing that really stands out to me here, mm -hmm. this book is in 15 languages. The fact that you <laughs> took the time <laughs> to publish this book in 15 languages? No, no, actually the, the guy that endorsed me. His it book says right here. Wait, it says his, number one best-selling book, the Dean. Oh, now in 15 languages. I thought this was, in, I thought you published it in no, 15 languages. The guy that endorsed me, his book was in 15 oh. languages. We're gonna get your book in fifteen languages. <laughs> <laughs> Another two. I can help you with two. <laughs> I mean, you've probably seen some crazy stuff. I seen your doghouse video on your YouTube channel, uh, and uh, the kennel in the house. Like, like, what is cleaning out houses? I mean, you learn a lot about people <laughs> by what they have in their house. I can only imagine. Some of the things you guys have seen. Oh man, uh, family friendly show. But can you tell me some stuff <laughs> that? The, yeah, there's some crazy, some stuff. crazy stuff. You know, there was one lady. Is just, I mean, some people's houses you're going to, you wonder how in the world can this person live here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a lady I went into a house. She she wanted me to take the carpets up out of her house, mm -hmm. and when I went into her house, all you see was ro roaches was everywhere. Like alive or dead? Live. Oh. So I'm I'm sitting here talking to her about her place, and I have to keep moving my feet up and down so the roaches won't crawl on my feet. That's how much houses she had. Roaches she had. Wow. That was like a place where I used to live, actually. <laughs> Wait, and she lived there, or she was like... She lived there. There was an older... I think it was her mother who was sitting in a chair, and roaches was crawling all over. And yeah, I'm, right. I'm telling you, man, I couldn't, I couldn't stay. I said, listen, I can't do this. I can't send my guys in here. I said, I don't even want to come in here. I said, you got to get rid of these roaches. I said, we can't take this carpet up. She's like, oh, okay, yeah, I got to get rid of it. But it was just amazing. It was crazy. Wow. I'm Roaches like, are hard to get rid of, too. Can you imagine going in a house and you have to keep lifting your feet up so the roaches won't climb on your feet? I lived in a house with nine roommates with a slumlord renting it out to us. There was a leak in the roof. And this leak went unaddressed for a year. Right. And I was living there six months. I didn't, that was cool to everybody. But then the roaches got so bad mm. that no one could cook at night so we all had to cook during the day <laughs> literally you would get home and you turn on the the light and it was just whoosh, and like it was that's at night david yes that's every ghetto child <laughs> story <laughs> yeah but that's at night i went to, that's i went the to projects this. that's the hood that's just how like that's how we came up the majority <laughs> of us Maybe you did it in your adult years. The majority of us got by the time we were adults, we were no longer experiencing those type of things. But right. it, it was the ghetto of Hicksville. <laughs> <laughs> ghetto of Hicksville. <laughs> oh, man. So, Jeff, outside of um, the junk cleaning business, right? Because you, not only the junk business, you got, first of all, you got multiple things going on, right? Mm. Let's talk about the fact that your social media presence and what you do there, right? Because you're, you're on social media so often, your Instagram, your Instagram and live in, your Facebook guy, right? Then you got the roller skating. You got, like, it's a lot. You got the <laughs> thrift shop, the thrift store. You got, there's a lot happening. Talk to us about the transition first off, because you took, like, you parlayed or alley -oop, like, you transitioned the business from not just junk removal, right? Mm -hmm. And I know what happened. I think I'm smart. This is what I think would happen, right? Because this is what happens to me. You go into these houses as you're doing renovations, like as soon as you acquire them. You got to call a junk guy to clean all the stuff out, right? Usually if someone leaves tons of stuff behind, right. you as a new owner, it's your responsibility to move the things out of the house. Mm -hmm. So you call a guy, a junk company like Jeff. So Jeff, 
being the entrepreneur that he is, he keeps going through houses like this. Some of this stuff is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? So some of this stuff can be repurposed. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to just discarding of all of it and throwing it in a dumpster, this is just me looking at it from the <laughs> outside. I think that the thrift business was created because he said to himself, why am I throwing this in the dumpster? I'm throwing money away. Yeah, if I just free. take all of the things that are actually usable, reusable, yeah. that someone would actually use, mm -hmm. and I can put that in my store sell it at yeah. a ridiculous discount where it makes sense to everyone. It's pure profit. <laughs> becomes a recycling business model. And this guy right here is entrepreneur of the year. If in fact that's what he's doing. And my <laughs> intuition tell me that's what he is. Because I've seen the thrift store. I've seen the stuff. Mm -hmm. I've seen, I'm not going to go too much into your business. Even if that isn't your business. I think that's your business. So I'm not going to go to delve too much into it. I'll let you explain it. But from the outside of the, looking in, that's what it seems like. I just want to know if I'm accurate. Well, yes, it's a thank thrift you. store. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, but the way that I want to know, wait, I don't want to, I, don't, I just wanted to know if I was right as far as the inventory is concerned. Absolutely. Okay, great. So Absolutely. now let's get into that business model because it's awesome. It's a genius idea. The the thing is, I've always wanted to do it, and I've always talked to my family about doing it, and I've never really had a place to do it. So I would do it here and there. I would do it on Craigslist. I would do it on uh, eBay. I do what do, when you say do sell, it? Sell sell stuff that I would get. I would hold on to few things instead of everything, and then I would sell things here and there. I would do uh, flea markets in Brooklyn. But then it became, it was too much, like you're too much moving around. And then when I moved into an, an office space and the person that sold that building moved out, I had plenty of room and I took over that uh, part of the office space and I started, I was able to open up this, the concept that I've had for years and then I started doing it. You know? I've seen some of the, I've, I've seen your Instagram, <laughs> Jeff Turner's <laughs> World. I, I got to say, that is some fun. You, you got a great channel. It's hilarious. Some <laughs> of the people that you have coming into your store, that no actors, just characters. Characters. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, there was, what was the guy wearing the Lennon shirt you had coming in there? You had the people's... Ed, Ed actually... Wait, wait, wait. So we I wasn't done. Oh. Your business, right? Yeah. I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. You wanted to do what? I they want to know. You no, wanna, see, so see. talk. Tell them how my thesis made sense. How you turned it into a business model. What the thrift shop is about. What you do there. Okay. There's a club. There's a dollar amount associated with it. Let's get some free. I'm trying to give you All some right. free publicity. So, so here, the brother. thing is, the thing is this. I like I said before. I study a lot. I study business and marketing. I studied the eighty twenty principle. I was studying a guy named Perry Marshall, and Perry Marshall talked about the eighty twenty principle for years. And then he came, I came across the star principle, which Richard Koch wrote. He wrote the 80-20 principle. And the star principle said if you're in an industry that's growing by more than 10% a year, and if you're the leader in that industry, mm -hmm. that your, in, your, your business is going to boom. Mm -hmm. So from that time when I read that, I was thinking, how can I turn this into a, a star company, star business, mm -hmm. because I'm competing with these big guys, but how can I compete? Mm -hmm. So that time I was trying to figure out how can I transition this from that. And as we kept going along, I kept learning more and more and more. Then Richard Koch, I heard, I mean, I seen that he had a book called Simplify. Mm -hmm. And this is the way you create a star business. You know, you simplify by proposition or by price. So proposition is you make a product or service so simple that everybody wants it. Mm -hmm. Or price, you could cut the price by 50 to 90%. So everybody wants it. And that's the way that you would cut into another market mm -hmm. and create your own niche. Mm -hmm. So that's what I set out to do. Until, you until, create stuff, create, until you create <laughs> such of a buzz and such an attractive business, they know who you are, and you raise your prices. No, you don't, still, you don't. Well, you don't? To, so you're you, never going to raise your prices. You first, don't of all, what's your, first of all, you don't have to. First of all, Jeff, because <laughs> you're not going to do that to me. What is the price point okay. of everything in your thrift store? We have a, uh, the name of our thrift store is called a five dollar bargain. Say lab. that one more time, the please. Five dollar bargain lab. The five dollar bargain lab. So that right. means anybody that comes in becomes a member. Sixty nine dollars for six months, ninety nine dollars for twelve months. They can get anything that they see in the in the, in the lab for five dollars or less. Five dollars. Wow. So, right there, like I'm cutting into the market. I'm just totally transforming thrift. And what type of things would you find in this store I mean, for five dollars? Because it's like five. Is it like five and below? Like, what do you mean it's five? I mean, because you could have a cup. Like, I can have cups. I'm mm -hmm. not, obviously I'm not going to charge five dollars for cups. Why not? But because 
This is less than five dollars. <laughs> but I'm saying I thought it was the five dollars. So we charged, what would you charge for it? Maybe a dollar. Could be a dollar. Oh, it's five, so it's like five and below. Five and below. Because yeah. I saw you the other day. I saw you and I was like, mm-hmm. I need to be a member here. <laughs> he had a glass there was a glass the table. Glass table. A circular yes. table. And this was like a three hundred dollar table. I'm like three three plus. <laughs> Even in a thrift store, like someone would yeah. give a hundred bucks for this table. Mm-hmm. And I looked, I saw it was all glass. It was probably like a 38, 36 inch round. Mm-hmm. Maybe a forty two inch round. It was a big right. table. I'm like, oh. I could use that. And he put it up and it's like, too late, guys, it's gone. If you remember it, the $5 ad, I'm like, wow. <laughs> but you know what I'm thinking? Because I know you. First of all, this guy, last year, I don't know if it was my birthday. I think it was my birthday. Popped up to me. And I'm going to tell you what I think. Because <laughs> this guy, is a he's a, he's a research junkie. Mm. Like he researches things. He researches people. Mm. He was just spitting out authors. And I know there's one particular influencer <laughs> that he has a passion for. And I think a lot of this business model he got comes from this guy. Ah, <laughs> Gary V. Gary V. <laughs> and his um, garage sale or yard sale tours that he would do. Yeah. Oh, I think yes, part yes. of it had to come from the, because mm-hmm. the, there's a mindset that things are more valuable to some people than they are to others, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So someone throwing something away, he's picking it up for a couple of bucks. But Gary, what he would do is is an arbitrage game. So he takes the thing and then he resells it. But he sells it for different prices and he makes more money on it. But Jeff created a business model that's scalable because mm-hmm. everything's five dollars. So that's ridiculously scalable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this was my very first first of all, my brother. I still got them. They're fresh. <laughs> this was my very. I got a. I got a sign. I got an autographed pair. Gary of Gary V sneakers, that. still fresh in the box, wow. as a gift from Jeff mm-hmm. about a year ago. Yeah, yeah, My yeah. birthday. Yeah. So let me ask you a question, Jeff. Is this an authentic Gary V signature? Because <laughs> you gave it to me with a signature. I just, just want to know. it on there. Yo, I have the picture. Gary V was having a shoe signing uh-huh. the night before. I don't know. I was looking online or something like that. I th- always wanted to meet him. Mm-hmm. He was having a shoe signing the next day in New York City. I said, man, I'm going I went there, was online. Actually, I did a lot of interviews with people that was online. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about, you know, why'd you come see Gary Vee and stuff like that. And we can buy the shoes, and he signed them all. Mm-hmm. So I bought eight pair. Mm-hmm. Oh, you mean. bought eight? I bought eight pair. I thought it was special. Can you cut that? Can you edit that part out? <laughs> Just say you got one for me. Don't say no, you got eight. Listen, I was going to sell them. Mm-hmm. But I didn't sell them. I started actually. I started wearing. I started wearing yeah, those them. nice shoes. Yeah, I'd wear them too. <laughs> well, I you started wearing. So them. Uh, they're nice. So you got my size though. Yeah, it was it eleven and a half. Yeah, yeah. I got some that you didn't know. You got now. It's starting <laughs> to sound more and more. What are you talking about? Like a five dollar thrift gift. <laughs> no, no. This, was that nice shoe? Did it's you nice. have me in mind Obviously, before you got not, them? This is was, not, was was I in mind? This is the authentic. <laughs> was I in mind before you got them, or was I an afterthought? That's what I want to know. This guy. I think we should put that up to a poll. <laughs> <laughs> the audience vote you on guys it. tell me, do you believe yeah. I was an afterthought? Or do you believe he actually went there intentionally to say, hey, you know what, my guy Lance, man, this is my guy right here. Actually, make sure that he gets Actually, you know why I you know what the main reason why? Because you started doing your did you start doing your um you started doing a podcast in when I first started, yeah. I said, Man, because now he's he's, he's into it. He now he start he's following Gary mm-hmm. V. He's listening to it and stuff like that. I said, Man, I gotta give him this pair because He's doing it. And I think I had talked to you about doing it like maybe four stop. years ago. Stop, yes, but five. stop. You're not answering the question, Jeff. Cut it out. <laughs> Did you intentfully get the sneakers for me or was I an afterthought? Was it like a re-gift? Like you got it for somebody else. You were like, what size you in? They were I like, I need a 12. You were like, damn, I got 11 and Listen. a half. Hey, Lance, what size you in? I'm like, 11 and a half. Got something for you. Lance, I can sell these things on, on what's the name for $500. Not anymore. You it's, not re, it's not a real. They're mine. You can't sell anything. <laughs> actually, you could actually wear them and still probably sell them. Neither is going to happen. <laughs> I cherish these things because they're a gift from my friend <laughs> that in my mind oh, got man. them for me as a gift and I wasn't an afterthought. So I'm just going to keep in my mind, these were a gift that were intended for me. Mm-hmm. You got them. You waited online for two days. You camped out in front of Gary V's book signing specifically for mm-hmm. me so I could get a pair of these Gary V signed sneakers <laughs> in my mind. And I cherish them deeply, so I'm I would never them, sell man. them, nor am I going to wear them. They're a gif, they're a gift from you my buddy. You didn't even try Jeff. and put them on. Did you try them why? on? Why? No. The thing is, why would I? Put I don't think it's on? ever been worn. No, they've never been. They're brand new. You didn't even put them on. Oh, okay. Brand. The brand. The things. Oh, 
I've never unlaced them. I should get more money for them now because it's still. Uh, they are nice shoes, nonetheless. I mean, like I like I like to do Hustle things. Is the most important word ever. I well, I I mean I, that's his that's his thing. But mine's is uh, subtraction is the most important. Number, but yeah, I, but you don't have a sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> number one and number two. Like, does he know you? Did, like, did you say Gary? These are for my buddy Lance. He's an inspiration to me. This is my I seen him come up. I'm coming up. We're doing things together. Like, how did that go? You just like here, sign him. Or were they pre signed? Did you watch no, no, him? No, sign no, him? no, no, no. Absolutely, he was right there. So did you mention me when you got there? This guy. Damn. <laughs> I'm reaching, right? Yo, yo, you're a funny guy, man. You're a funny man. <laughs> all right, so they weren't intentionally. But man, me. I mean, it was like that moment uh-huh. with all of these entrepreneurs there and Gary Vee signing them sneakers. And it's the first person that ever was um, that, what, he sponsored a sneaker? Mm-hmm. As not, an influencer, not, yeah. Not, a, not yeah. a sports guy. Right. No. As an influencer. Right. He's an Big entrepreneur. Jets, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people look at that and it's like, wow. I said it before. I'm thank you again, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. And you're not getting them back. <laughs> no, I don't want them back. Man. I can't fit them. Of course not. <laughs> but you can sell them. Yeah. But you can't sell them. Nah. But it, but it was a good, it was just, um, like I'm a giver. Mm-hmm. And I always look for places where I can give and make an impact. And I believe if you do that, it's going to come back to you. Mm-hmm. But it, you, it makes you feel better when you do it. Because especially if, when you, when you get to a level when you're making all the money and you have everything that you want, you have to find something that, some um, higher purpose to continue oh, to go on. Absolutely. Yes. Like what is your higher purpose? Exactly. Like if you're not, Trying to give or impact or help someone because there's so many people that need help. There's so many people that's around that they can't do it on their own. And you're in a situation and you can give them advice, but they can't even move from where they are. Yeah. A lot of times the advice that we give people, they're not ready for it because of the position that they're in. Absolutely. You know, and if you understand where they are, you understand that that advice, they can't use it right now. Mm-hmm. Not only that, but you've seen the suffering of when you cleaned out people's homes like right. you've seen what happens when you have someone literally is coming to take your house and your stuff and like that's well giving he, you the desire well, when, to, when jeff goes it's not it's not like um, it's not an eviction right mm-hmm. it's the people are electing to hire him right. they pay him to remove the stuff out of the house so like, it's not like property preservation it's mm-hmm. more so an elect listen you know, my mom's going to a nursing home mm-hmm. yeah. or um, I inherited this home or whatever the case may be. Somebody passed away. And then what happens is they would call Jeff. They would pay him a fee. He would move things from the house for them so they can then put the house for sale. So he would then call me. I go to the house, make an offer, and then we turn it into a flip. <laughs> there's definitely an emotional That's how this relationship goes. <clears throat> yeah, there's, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot, most people don't want to get rid of stuff. Mm-hmm. One of the hardest things, even with the $5 bargain lab, with me, when I have a three hundred dollar glass table, mm-hmm. I would rather sell it to somebody that's not a member and make more money than sell it for five dollars to a member. In my mind, in my heart, but the thing is, I know this is a long term thing. Right. So if I sell it now, if I'm if I'm willing to give that up right now, mm-hmm. and like five yeah. years scalable, I'm thinking about that. Right. Keyword scalable. You know, you know what I'm saying? Right. Which is why it's not. It's not. It's a business model. It's right. not arbitrage. It's a scalable business model. Right. Period. End of story. Right. I like it. I like it a lot. And, and there's a guy named Larry. I don't know if you saw the video with Larry. Larry. <laughs> he comes in. He says, oh, oh, my. "How could you? How are you?" Oh yeah, yeah. Like, he looks like Larry like David yeah. too. Yeah. 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 I told him. I yeah. said, "Yo." He looks like Larry David. He talks like him too. You're not gonna make any money. What are you doing? Like you need you need your own show, man. This is Jeff Turner's world. Well, I do have my own taking everybody. I just don't have the video people right now. So if you don't have video people, how do you have a show? I do my own show. It's a real life show. <laughs> it's a real life show. I just you gotta are get the a video real life people. show. Yeah, I just got to get the video no, I'm just joking. Of course I got you. characters around me. Yo, yeah, you know what you said to me about Jeff? Let me tell you what you said to me about Jeff. <laughs> Before yeah. I ever did any of this social media stuff, I was mm-hmm. never comfortable in front of the camera or whatever. He would just come around and I'd be talking to him, right? <laughs> we'd just be talking regular. And he'd have his hand on his phone and I wouldn't know. And then he's like, thanks. And then he'd hit it and he'd like hit stop. I'm like, what? You just, like, yeah, I just recorded the whole thing. I'm going to put it on whatever. I'm like, why? I don't, can you please not? He's like, no, you're going to like it. It'll be fine. And this was years and years and years ago. And I was super uncomfortable mm-hmm. with him doing this. But after a while, if Jeff was coming, you knew there was going to be a camera on. 
Absolutely. And it was just like, that's just it. And he's still the same way. Just now, we took a ride in the car, right? So I was showing him some of the stuff that I was doing, took him to a project, mm-hmm. right? We're going, through some, we're going through the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and we're in a rough neighborhood. And he just has his phone out. He's recording. His hand is hanging out. The, his hand is hanging out the window, recording what's going on. Now, we're in a rough neighborhood. Uh, yeah. We're riding around. We're in, we're in Newark. Yeah, you can't have right? the cameras out. Guys there. hanging out. He just has his camera out recording. I'm like, what do you? I said, you know they're on. Like, they don't want good, some I'm like, this is not recorded. a good look. You can't do that right yeah. now, right here, Jeff. Not now. He's like, oh, really? No, no. Said, this is not the neighborhood for that right now, but, Jeff. Yeah. But he's a guy that, um, and this, and I started. He showed me, right. And I'm humble enough to say, when it comes to me being comfortable and realizing that, in order to make a massive effect on people that I want to make, mm-hmm. I have to become comfortable in front of the camera so I can reach the masses. Jeff was someone who instilled that in me for years. Mm-hmm. And I was ignorant. I just want to hear it for social media. No. Camera, no. Ne- for years. Mm-hmm. Finally, it happened. Like I became comfortable with it. And everything that I'm doing right now, I'm humble and I'm thankful enough to say Everything that I'm doing right now, the, com- the the podcast, the running around, the shooting, um, the house flipping, the teaching. The events. It's all the events. Speaking in front well, of people. Yeah. Well, that's always been something that I wanted to do, but I had to get there. Mm-hmm. But the fact that on a daily basis that I'm comfortable standing in front of a camera, mm. I was pretty much first introduced to that idea by Jeff, and it kind of helped groom me. He was the first person to put a camera in front of me ever and say, it's too late, it's done. Mm. And then I saw myself on some social media page. <laughs> the very first person that I ever, the reason I, the very first, I'm like, I'm like, oh, it ain't so bad. Right. And that was you, bro. Right. That was, that was you. Right. And this was for years, but that was you. He is the reason that mm. I actually even thought about it. And I just kept thinking about it and thinking wow. about it, thinking about it. And he would come by the office. So every so often he'd be like, you doing it yet? I'm like, no, <laughs> man, get out of here. He would come, I swear, he would come to the office at least once a month. And he'd be like, so what's going on? I see all these people, everybody's working. <laughs> So what are you doing? You're doing the personal brand in it? I'm like, no. He's like, you're still not in front of a camera? I'm like, no. And he would do this <laughs> constant every time he came. Bruh. I'm like, wait, am I lying? No, no, absolutely. Maybe, why are you not doing it yet? I'm like, because I don't want to. <laughs> you're going to miss out, man. You're going to miss out. And he did this. He did this. For, he did this. He, he tortured me with this for years. Mm. And now, look. Like now, I'm comfortable, obviously mm. doing it. My mom does that when she wants when she wanted me to clean my room, and now my wife does it. She when She does wants me what? Clean. Tays out the camp. She, she just keeps you. Her- <laughs> well, sometimes she. Where'd does. you just come? Where did the, well, what are you I, doing? I came out of like, like we didn't even close my it's thing. It's the same. <laughs> what it, do you? I'm sorry. It's the same. It's the same thought process though. If you think about it, like, look, mom, I finally cleaned my room. Right? David, she wanted him. To- that was a heartfelt. How'd you do? Like. <laughs> there was no segue. It was, it was just, we just, were having a moment, just <laughs> and you just did it even resonate at all? Uh, I just I just saw two and two. I, I wanted to connect. All right, go dots. back to your mom. Oh, go ahead, no, 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 not my mom. You said your mom. No, 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 not my mom. It was it was where it said, "Look, mom, I finally cleaned my room." But yes. it's the same uh, the, the thought process. What mm. I was alluding to was, are you going to clean your room? No, nah, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I don't want to clean my room. Are you going to clean your room? You're going to clean your room. You're going to clean your room. You're finally like, Ugh, all right, I'll do it. Oh. Same thing, same uh, oh, premise right, was right, that right. by you coming to the basis, office on a regular basis, by exposing you to the camera. You should have led with that. You should have started I, with that. I, I, I okay, because you, you took me on a, took me on a ride. Just land the plane. That was a ride. That was a long a ride. A little bit of turbulence, but we're... <laughs> I got it. Landing. We got it, there. Okay. We're there. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Any other, so, like I said... Major influence for me to get this thing going as far as, you know, getting in front of the camera and become comfortable. And he's still doing it right now. Mm-hmm. Outside of what he does from the business aspect, he has um, a great leisure time, right, pastime, hobby yeah. that he does. He actually, let me tell you this guy. Talk about innovation, right? Mm. <sighs> he has a passion for roller skating. Mm-hmm. So what he does is he takes his store and at certain times, number one, it's at night. Certain times during the week, he converts his store into a roller skating ring. <laughs> That's awesome. There's people there, they're skating, they're dancing, there's music. Now, I'm not a roller skating guy, but looking at him, I'm like, how? Like, this guy's amazing. That's mm. like, that's all. I never, I can't even remember the last time I've been to a roller skating rink. I, I want to I wanna go. How'd you that come go. about? What, what gave you that well, idea? 
I mean, I, I, I started skating like five years ago. Uh, my church, we had an event for the young people, and mm -hmm. we took them, and then I was trying this trick that I seen a guy do when we was younger. I fell like 25 times, and all the young people was laughing at me. So, I, And then I saw one of the guys in the neighborhood. He said, yo, they have a, every Monday night they have a um, session, an adult session. I said, word. So I started going to the adult session, started skating. And at the same time, I started, people didn't know me. I would pull my camera out. Because <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> he pulled the camera out. Yo, Told you. People are like, oh, man, what is this guy doing? Like, you always got the camera. and you Get that camera out of my face and things. Same thing like with Lance. Mm -hmm. And I just kept video and video and video. And at the same time, I wanted to start a reality. I, I kept telling my family, we should start a show. Mm -hmm. yeah. So nobody wanted to do it, so I did it. Mm -hmm. I said, I called it Jeff Turner's World, and I would videotape everything, and I would Post it on social media and stuff. Cut like it that. up, put music behind it. Absolutely. And it's listen, if you're not if you're not following him now, following it now, what's your what's your handle? Jeff? IG, Jeff Turner's World on IG and YouTube IG, Jeff Turner's World. Jeff Turner's World. Mm -hmm. Jeff Turner's World. My it's hilarious. So you said you want to roll skate. Are you going? What day I, I what, what go. nights? Monday, what nights should David Monday, he's Monday going? What nights is he going? What night is it? Monday? Monday nights. It was mandatory what do you mandatory call mandatory Mondays? Mondays. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to go now. It's we who? This don't we have me to go I don't see skate. French, David. You can go by yourself. I'm not roller skating. <laughs> roller skating? That's French? not for me, bro. No, we is French. Oh we Palais vous Francais, Maisy. Oh, je voudrais le roller skate. There you go. Keep your guard up, chérie. Hello, young lover. Yeah, there you go. Go roller skate, bro. <laughs> have fun. We so could. then I just kind of implemented uh, like roller skating with the thrift shop, with mm -hmm. the store, like bring it together, mm -hmm. like try to figure out, okay, well, how could you be different? Mm -hmm. You know, so you bring in roller skating, people are interested in having fun and they're looking at you doing it. People want to save money, it's thrifting, you know. And you're and building your customer base at the same time. Absolutely. And I in, in implement it with, with real estate. Yeah. What Lance is doing, like, you know what I mean? So you buy thrift and invest a difference. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you spending $300 on this when you could spend ten dollars or five dollars and then you can save that money and invest mm -hmm. yeah you know. yeah there you go that's oh, that's awesome i think you blew my mind uh i also with the with the roller skating like it just creates such a fun atmosphere so yeah. there there's foot traffic and you just see that on on a monday it, yeah. it's just contagious you want to be part of it yeah. and yeah. uh I, I just i just thought that was well amazing. i'm still not going but <laughs> I love watching it. It's very entertaining. Mm -hmm. David's gonna sh you go on Monday. I, I'm gonna go. I want to see it. Sure. I want to yeah, see I, it. I, I would like. Yeah. I'm, I'm you don't have to have your skates at first. I I, I, I actually don't have skates. You don't have but to have. Can you? Do you have skates? You have skates, skates there? No, no, no. So how's he gonna skate with no skates? Can I I put, you don't have to skate. Have you, you, I'll go can there. You but skate? can I put wheels on those shoes? And <laughs> first of all, don't touch my. Shoes. <laughs> That's number one. Actually, people do that. Really? There's a whole skating world. Because they have the ones that you can attach to your shoe. Yeah. You don't have to be. Yeah, you can just get no, those. No, 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 no. They actually screw them to the shoes. I have an old pair of shoes. We can do that. Let's yeah, I'll go on Monday. I want to go. Yeah, I haven't went roller skating in a... Oh, man, I can't even remember. That's going to be hilarious. Well, you don't have to skate. I don't want you to fall. And no, I, 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 I used to uh, rollerblade. I had a ramp I used to jump off of i mean this oh, years wow. ago uh, i play street hockey oh okay. i grew up so in florida you, so, so you're used to it yeah we didn't play ice hockey we had the roller blades on the asphalt and mm -hmm. we didn't have a puck but we had a hockey ball there we go mm -hmm. yeah. so another episode of real estate informant podcast mm. my man my friend one of my mentors jeff turner in the building listen great time man appreciate it Thanks for can't wait me. to come back guys if you don't have the book Downsize Before Transition, written by my guy, Jeff Turner. Get it. If you do not have Look Mom, I Cleaned My Room by Jeff Turner. Get it. Where can they get your books at, brother? Everywhere. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Anywhere. What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> you can can get they get it? Get like, it like, what do you mean? Can they go so they can get it Home Depot? <laughs> no. So where can they get your books? You can go to you can go to Amazon. You can go to um, you can go to IG, Jeff Turner's World. You can go to Facebook, Jeff Turner. And you can ask me to purchase the book. There you go. Pick up the book. Support or you can my come man. into the store. Come into the store. Where's the store I'm, located, I'm brother? 570 Monday. Broadway, Amityville, New York. 570 Broadway, Amityville, New York. 11701. Oh, yeah. My guy, Jeff Turner. Listen, everybody. We're going to close this one out. Stay blessed. Stay focused. Stay working. Real estate informant, Jeff Turner. Doing it with David. Guys, appreciate it. Good one. Thanks.